Hey, this is John Young with The Weekend Handyman. Today we're going to be talking about solar panels. We've got some solar panels that we had installed here on the office here at the Weekend Handyman office. And I want to show you what we've got going here and kind of walk you through just a little bit because I've had a lot of questions about our solar panels and people have been seeing them as they've been driving by. So let's kind of dig into what a solar system, solar panel system, solar system is way up there, a solar panel system looks like here. So we've installed the panels up on the roof of our building here. This is a 42 panel system that you're looking at up there. We've got, it was kind of a rectangular shape initially, but you can see that protrusion that's right there in the middle. That little pipe, man, we had to move three panels to the very end Just to keep it somewhat rectangular looking. From the ground, it looks pretty good. From up in, you know, if you'd be flying, it's kind of weird shaped, but that's okay. This 42 panel system, you can actually see it comes pretty close. We've got about a foot on each end, roughly, and about six inches on the bottom that wasn't covered. Otherwise, it covered the whole roof, and it looks pretty decent. You know, if you've seen solar panels, sometimes they kind of stand out. Well, these really kind of blend in pretty well, and if you aren't looking, you're not really seeing them. So that's kind of a neat, neat thing for us. Now, the angle, the degree angle on these, this isn't quite optimal. It'd be nice if they would be a little bit steeper, especially as we get into the winter months. They want to be closer to 40 degree angle, and this is probably closer to 30 degree than we would like but it's still it's not bad and in the summertime this is a very optimal angle for us to be able to get the best of summer and to do pretty decent in the winter time so let's go take a look at the brains of this system because there's a lot of technology coming up here and we're going to show it to you so right there you're seeing the whole electronical part of the system what we've got here is we've got our meters of course that go to the electric company then we have the meters that keep track of how much we're producing then we have the meters that keep track of 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 uh, how much you know going forward uh, there's just so much let's go take a look at this we're going to start on the very right here this is of course the meters that were here from the electric company years ago well they've been changed a little bit the one on the very on the right here this is our off peak this controls the heating in the floor of the building that doesn't have anything really to do with the solar system whatsoever the solar uh, generating system this one is a bi-directional meter meaning that this will go forward or backward depending upon what's happening and how much electricity is being used in the system then we have our different cutoffs and connections and such that are going in here. In this particular box, I believe there's, a, there's some breakers and things that are in this one. There's a main shutoff. And all of this is something that will automatically shut off if the power coming from the power company is off. If it doesn't detect 220 volts coming back, this will shut itself off. So it will not produce electricity and give somebody a nasty shock. This particular meter is here to can, kind of give um, Minnesota Power, who is the main company here, it gives them an idea of how much we have produced, and it is producing electricity today. This is producing close to 10,000 watts right now, and we'll go and we'll show you that in just a little bit. And then this is the inverter side of it. This is the really the brains and such and the brawn of the solar, the solar panels right here. And of course, as it's shut up, up on the very top, there is a Wi-Fi antenna. There's also a cell phone antenna system built into this, so it can transmit information out via T-Mobile in this particular case. They've got the data plan for like 12 years of T-Mobile uh, access, and then it can send the same information to the monitoring via Wi-Fi and send it out that way. Now, right in here is our little LED information center right here. Right in here is our little LED information center. Now that will allow us to go into a menu and be able to see how much we're producing, uh, to reset it for time, you know, for it monthly, however we want to do it. But there's a lot of information that is stored right there, and that will also tell us uh, we can go in there and kind of monitor a little bit on how the panels are doing. Are all 42 panels working? Does it identify all 42? Has something happened up there? A lot of information can be garnered right from that little menu. And of course, it's really bright today, so we're not going to be able to do much of that. But this total system does not have battery, uh, any battery storage on this one. This one just basically creates the energy and then sends it down and it feeds it over to the electric company. This particular meter is sending electricity out right now and it's sending about 10 kilowatts, just a hair over 10 kilowatts right now to the electrical company. And then we come on over here and we can see that the kilowatts, the extra is being sold to the electric company in this particular configuration. Let's go take a look at the metering that we can monitor on the internet. So this is a look at the the monitoring system that is built into this system. Now our system was installed by All Energy Solar and this is part of the the uh, whole package that we got when they put it together and the monitoring and things. They can see this, we can see this, we can see this from any mobile device who are actually doing it on a desktop here just to make it a little easier to show. So what we're seeing is the last 24 hours. We're at one day right here, you can see that one day. And we had, yesterday was very cloudy, so we didn't, we didn't have a lot of production. The production is the green, and the red is my electricity usage. And you can see that we had something that was kicking on, 
we had heat going on, we had some charging things going on and such, so we've had a lot of activity going on. Now we get over into this area. This is this morning as the sun came up, and then the sun got to a point, and it was kind of partly cloudy this this morning till about 11 o'clock. Then it cleared off. Well, here's about 2 kilowatts of power. Then it jumped up to about 10 kilowatts of power, and you can see it peak at a couple of times even higher than that. I Gosh, I, want, I have no idea why it would do that. We also had some snow here that was on, and it melted off, so that's why it went up. Now we're getting to the point, here's 2 p.m. right here, and now we're at 3 p.m., and we're at that time of the year where the sun starts to go down into the west, so you can see that our power generation is starting to dwindle as we go. This is our different reports that we can look at. So this was one day. I'm going to go back to the last week because we have we have been in a very dark kind of dreary time right now. And this is this is kind of a look at the last week of solar production or electricity production. So here's our today. Yesterday was a very cloudy, rainy, kind of snowy day, so we had very little, but yet there was still something being produced each and every day, which is actually kind of surprising. So we, we produced just a little bit more yesterday than we used during the day, but not by much. And obviously, overnight, we have heating and things that are kicking in now, so that's changing things. But each day, there was a little bit, you know, something, something uh, the, re energy, the red spiked here, so I don't know what I did there, what was kicking in at that particular time. But we go over here, we had some less cloudy days, and they had some maybe a peak of some sun that came in here. Um, again, this is a look at the last week. So we're talking that here's a Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, Monday, Sunday. So last Saturday, there must have been a little bit of sunshine that did break through, but not enough to really, really matter in the, the whole uh, picture. And we can go and we can look at it, say, in the last three hours and see exactly, you know, here we are at the 9 kilowatt. This is the 9 kilowatt line. This is the 10 kilowatt. So we were just about to the, uh, the this system is rated at 11 kilowatts, so it was getting pretty close. Now this particular system is guaranteed for 20 years to be at 80% of its production. So the 80%, so roughly at 10 kilowatts in 20 years, it's going to start to have a little bit of loss and it's going to be probably looking at eight kilowatts of electricity after you know, 15, 20 years of, of use. But it's a very efficient system and it's de designed to last a very long time. We'll put a link to All Energy Solar so you can go check this out, but they're the company that installed this, and they're going to be the company that will install our next one, and our next one is going to also feature the battery system, the battery backup, so we can use that to really be off the grid if we so choose. And that, of course, will be something that we're going to be looking at in the future, whether in 2019 or 2020. This is John Young with The Weekend Handyman. Thanks for watching. For more tips and how-to videos, go to weekendhandyman.com.